The first quantitative model that we'll look at for uh, lithology analysis is called the density neutron crossplot method or the matrix density method. It's a two mineral model. It allows you to segregate your rocks into two primary minerals. It's based on the crossplot that's on the right hand side of the screen. This is a crossplot of density or density porosity on the vertical axis and neutron porosity on the horizontal axis. You notice there are three diagonal lines uh, on that graph uh, showing the word sandstone, limestone, and dolomite labeling those three lines. It doesn't necessarily mean that a data point that falls on one of these lines uh, is equal to the mineral name that's on the line, but it does mean that the matrix density, that's the grain density of the rock, is equal to the grain density of that mineral. So if a data point falls on the limestone line, it might be limestone, but it might also be a mixture of quartz and something else whose net density, matrix density, is equal to that of limestone, namely 2.71 grams per cc. So these diagonal lines really represent different matrix densities. And by plotting data points on this graph or using the mathematics that this graph represents, we can calculate the matrix density of any particular data point on our log. The mathematics for a two mineral model are not uh, overly complicated. Uh, we have to first find the density of the shale, that's dense SH, uh, equation number one, from the porosity of the shale on the density log. The KD1 and KD2 terms there depend on the scale of the log. You have a sandstone scale, you'll use one particular set of numbers, which are listed in uh, your course notes. And uh, if it's a limestone scale, you'd use a different set of numbers for KD1 and KD2. We also have to find the uh, density from the porosity log. If uh, the log is displayed as a density porosity, then we must convert that back to the original density. If density is already given, then equations 1 and 2 are not needed. You merely pick the density shale value off the density curve and pick the density of your layer uh, from the density log in front of the layer. Once the densities are attained, whether they come from porosity or directly from the density log, we throw these numbers into a fairly long equation, number 3, which calculates dense MA. That's the matrix density calculated from the logs. It requires the density log value, requires the effective porosity from a previous porosity calculation, and requires the density of water, the density of shale, and the volume of shale to finish off the equation number three. Once we have a matrix density, uh, we can uh, partition that density into the volume of two minerals. Mineral number one, for example, in a dolomitic sand, mineral number one might be quartz and mineral number two would be dolomite. So the density one that's shown in the equation would be the density of quartz. Density two would be the density of the second mineral, namely dolomite. The calculation gives you the volume of mineral number one as a decimal fraction and the volume of mineral number two as a decimal fraction. You might end up with uh, 0.6 for the volume of mineral number one, 0.4 for the volume of mineral number two. So it's a 60-40 mixture of quartz and dolomite. 